And joining us live via Skype to speak on the fear of community transmission in Nigeria is Dr. Doze Oswaji. Good morning, doctor, and how are you this morning? Good morning, I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Now, more new cases have been recorded in Nigeria. The recent ones are now 245. What's your ex impression about how COVID-19 has been tackled in the country? Well, I think um, in the country we are doing the much we can, but I think there's a lot more that we can do and that we should be doing. I think our response so far, um, we're being a bit reactive instead of proactive. I think we're not um, applying context to our response. I also think that we're not listening to the frontliners. By the frontliners, I'm not talking about the people who are taking care of confirmed patients in their solution units, but I'm talking of the healthcare workers who are moderately prepared or protected and seeing every case, not knowing who is COVID and who isn't. There's a disconnect between the policymakers and those group of frontline healthcare workers. And I think in our response, we're not thinking outside the box. We're not being, we're not thinking outside the box. We're not being proactive. Instead, we're being reactive. That's, those are my thoughts. Interestingly, you did make mention of that. Now, um, prior to the easing of the lockdown in these three states of Lagos, Ogo, and the Federal Capital Territory, the NDC, yeah. NCDC, um, several of these said it was in time for us to exit the lockdown. In your opinion, do you think this was premature? Yes, I, I think it was premature, and I think it, the, it was premature because a lot of plans were not laid down before the um, lockdown was eased down. For example, what were what was our plans with regards to crowd control? Right now, immediately the lockdown was eased, everyone is out on the streets. Even the law enforcement agents are no longer there. Nobody is enforcing to make sure that social distancing is done. Nobody is ensuring that masks are being worn by the population. So I, I think a lot should have been laid down before this lockdown was eased. For example, we, you know, we would have taken some of the parastatals and some of the union leaders and asked them to come up with proposals on how they will manage crowd control. Could it have been done that the banks would um, devise a means instead of everyone trooping to the bank, but people come at scheduled times. You send a text to the bank, and the bank gives you a schedule. If you want to have a business, your business conducted in the bank, they send you a schedule and tell you, okay, come around 4 p.m. So to someone else, they'll tell you, come around 3 p.m., just to make sure that the banks are not crowded. I think some of these measures, or, and this is just from the top of my head, some of these measures uh, should have been put in place before the lockdown was eased. With all what we saw yesterday, the videos that made the rounds of people scrambling at the banks and all the business places, Nigeria is battling um, the scale of community transmission right now. Can you briefly take us through what the federal government needs to do to prevent surge of community transmission? All right. So, like I said, the, the federal government needs to make sure that law enforcement agents are there to, to enforce the... Um, conditions for easing the lockdown. Example, social distancing, wearing of masks, people and spacing in, in commuter transports. The federal government needs to do that to ensure that people are not crowded in places. There need to be um, law enforcement agents in all the crowded areas to make sure that people observe social distancing, people wear their masks, banks and other parasitals, even the markets, for example, one could tell, okay, if you have people selling provisions in the market, you could say, okay, Mr. A and B, you open on Monday. Mrs. Uh, C and D, you would open on Tuesday. And kind of a schedule. I mean, these are things from the top of my head I can think of, but I know that there are many more ideas that they can harness to just make sure that crowd control is done. I understand the hardship. I understand that isn't the lockdown was an economic decision, but I also think they should put down steps and ensure that there are agents to enforce these steps. Finally, Doctor, the situation in Kano is pretty worrisome and it calls for concern. What is your thoughts on that and also your advice? My thoughts on that is that, I mean, like I said earlier, we need to be proactive. We need to really be proactive. We need to increase our testing capacity. 
testing, testing, testing. Now, at such points, like I said also, we need to be thinking outside the box. There's no textbook on this man on the management of the COVID-19. So we are writing the textbook as we go. Can, is it, can we consider using the rapid diagnostic t test as a tool at this point? Not just because uh, we know its limitations, but and we're not using it as a diagnostic tool, but as a screening tool, say, to remove those who are infected from the infected population. So can we use the RDT as a screening tool, if you test positive with the RDT, then the PCR can now be used to know whether you have a current infection or you've recovered from an infection. So that is one of the things that also can be done at this point with Dr. the Kano case. All right. Dr. Doze, it's been a pleasure having you join us on News on the Hour. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.